Come on then, Roger. We're down the posh end the posh of end. Manor Park Classic. <laughs> so over here, we've got a car that is not in the September the 10th sale. It isn't, no. No, no it's, it's a 1933 Barker, Rolls-Royce Barker 2025, yeah. six-light saloon. Um, I, interestingly, that, that all these three cars here are all mechanically similar. Okay. Um, this is 33, the other two are 1934, but they're the same, set mechanically the okay. same, just slightly different bodies on. Can I, can I just stop you there? Are you just showing off with this? Why, why, I mean, this is your car, so why, why are you showing this one when it's not for sale? The only reason is to illustrate that that car started off just like that car when I took it on. In fact, right, it, was okay. worse, it was worse condition than this car. Okay, so this has been fully restored. It has, yeah. Now this car, some would say, needs full restoration. <clears throat> well. <laughs> well, personally, I love this care-worn Rolls. Yeah. So this is a 1934 car. So this is 89, yeah. well, 88 years yeah. old. It's 1934, again, it's a 2025. It's yeah. what's called the D2 series, which is the mid-series. So yeah. it's the last of the cars that had the Rolls-Royce carburetor on in 1934. They changed to what's called an SU catchback yeah. carburetor. And they generally thought these ones run slightly better with the SU, with the Rolls-Royce carb on. Yeah. So it's the last one just before they changed over. So uh, this is a Thrupp and Maberly six-light saloon. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it seems to be pretty much in original, original specification. Okay. Um, you see your note there, that's the distinctive Rolls-Royce carburetor. Okay. Now it seems to be, from what I can see, most of it seems to be there. We've got some very, very ancient uh, electrical yeah, components and box, stuff like that. Yeah. So, so whoever buys it is going to need to go through it a little yeah. bit. However, it's taken a long time to get to look like it has, this, hasn't and it's it? yeah. It was last on the road allegedly in '83, '84. Yeah, it's been parked and dry stored ever since. Um, it's it's interesting. I mean, you either restore or you conserve. And it's personally with this one, I think it'd be great fun to recommission the car. Yeah, uh, and then obviously go through the chassis and recommission the car. Yeah, but pretty much leave it as it is. And I think that you know new tyres on it and everything else. And I think it'd be quite a cool thing to have. I yeah. agree. A couple of a couple of rugs over the yeah. over the clearly quite careworn, but actually yeah. still quite supple leather yeah. leather seats. Well, it's actually it's in its original specification with um, leather in the front for the chauffeur, yeah. cloth in the rear, West of England cloth in the rear. And I think that would actually save that with a bit of some clever stitching and so on. You could save the rear, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a Thrupp and Mabley, which was considered one of the better coach builders, really, right. high quality coach builders. Well, it's I like it. Interesting as well. Yeah. And it's also got an opening windscreen, which is very unusual for a limousine. Is that right? Yeah, generally, because it was the chauffeur they didn't really give that much time yeah. to the chauffeur, so it's generally a shorter driving position uh, with any of the, without any of the creature comforts. So it's unusual to have, so someone must have thought the chauffeur was a good guy. Oh, right, okay. Him. There we go. You can, yeah. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Here's the, uh, here's the, uh, here's the accessories book. That's it, yeah. Uh, you can you have can an opening windscreen. Two. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, so the engine turns freely. We've had that. We've had that turning over. Yeah. Obviously, not just just on the, on the fan. Um, so and it was running. So yeah, obviously you've got a budget for whatever you've got a budget for where you want to go with it. But yeah. my personal view of looking, it's been just parked up. And generally, when when they've parked up and they've blown up, yeah, you can, there's evidence of people taking bits off them yes. and that sort of thing, trying to, trying to trying to resolve a problem. But it looks very much like it's been parked up, just parked up and left. It makes me chuckle that one. It's got a tow bar on the rear. It's really. <laughs> so well, I'd love I have to know seen, what it's been towing. I have seen pictures of uh, older older Rolls like this yeah. with caravans oh, on the yeah, back yeah. quite, quite yeah. often, you know, in the 1950s and 60s. Yeah. Well, so, I've got pictures of one of them uh, towing caravans on the good yeah. you know, on, on caravan sites. So See, I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot. I think it's a great car. <clears> and <throat> personally, I think it would be a proper shame to, to restore it because... There must be a few of these about. Well, they actually made 3,824, believe it or not, 2025s between 1929 and 37. Okay, so that's the chassis, though. That's the chassis, yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm not sure how many of these windows, uh, Thrupp and Maberly um, limousines were built, but, but the survival rate is actually quite high. Yeah, similar I should to, imagine Similar so. to Land Rovers, really. They, yeah. they, they always they survive quite well. Okay, well, <coughs> there we go. I think if you buy this car, just try and live with it as it looks. Obviously, sort the wheels out, uh, get some new tyres on there, make sure that it's going to actually be able to withstand cornering and driving. 
um, sort out any uh, you know any things that don't work. Make sure that um, make sure that it's ready to go. But wow, I think it looks brilliant like this, and I would love, love, love to be driving a car that looked in this kind of condition. They're only original once. That's it. Now, this car looks a completely different prospect. Oh, incidentally, yep. what's the estimate on that? No reserve. No reserve. So it's selling what it sells for on the day. Okay. Yep. So you'll be bidding on it, won't you? <laughs> I can see it coming. I might do, you know. I might. Yeah. But there's a lot of romance in that car. A lot of originality, mm. and so you know, Great maybe, girl. maybe, maybe there will be a lot of people yeah. going down the same road as I am, thinking, "Wow, that would be a great machine to have." So, yep. talking of great machines, this this Rolls Royce, and again, a twenty twenty five. Yeah, what, what body's this? Nineteen thirty four again. So it's the same series, a D two mid series car. Yeah, as that, that one that, with, again with the Rolls Royce car better on it. Yeah, this is a Windover's saloon. So yes. under like that one, that's called a six light limousine. So yeah. three lights down the side, three yeah. windows. This is a standard saloon. So just two side windows. Uh, so it's a window, window of a saloon. And they're quite well known these, what's called the trouser crease wing. Oh, okay. So it's quite a distinctive styling feature that the windows. Oh, let's have a look at your trousers. Yeah, yeah, there's no creases in my trousers. No, no nor, nor, nor in mine either. So, uh, that so unusual, unusual for car, twin side mount spare wheels, which yeah. is most unusual really. They were generally fitted on if you like continental touring cars, okay. for obvious reasons, you're yeah. away for months on end. Most of the others have just got single side mounts, so it's got yeah, twin sure. side mounts. And unusually, again, for this car, these, covers, <coughs> these spare wheels covers have survived, and they often got discarded when they had people had a puncture. Yeah. And they're a bit of a devil to fit, so they generally just got left in a hedge. <laughs> so it's unusual that they actually survived. So, um, yeah, it's, it's different. This car's actually running. Um, okay, so running and driving? Yeah, we've had it driving around the yard. There is a problem with the fuel system, with the autovac system, that it's clogged up. It's been stored for many years. Okay, so, so, we, so, so hold on. Let me, let me put the brakes on you there. The autovac system. So the autovac system is a system whereby the vacuum from the inlet manifold on the, on the, uh, on the engine is used to draw via the autovac unit. Yep to draw fuel from the tank at the back. Correct, yeah, that's it. So there's, it's a, it, it obviously you said it's a vacuum system. There's a cork, there's a cork washer system on the tap that sits yeah. in the bulkhead that they dry out over, over years and just, so it needs that changing. But we've had it running, so you'd, you'd want to just flush, flush the lines out and so on. Yeah. But, uh, so we've had it running around the yard just on a, on a, on a, a fuel tank and it, sound, it sounded really nice actually. All right, cool. So it sounded, so I think this car just really wants some recommissioning yeah. rather than anything else. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a quite a pretty body, really, this car. It yeah. is. It is. Now, talking of originality, which uh, we were with the other one, yeah. let's, open the, uh, let's open the door to the Burgundy Velour. It is. It's, yeah, yeah, it's uh, obviously not original. It's not original, yeah. but I think it's got a certain charm to it. It looks a little too modern. Yeah. Uh, and so it looks like... A, do you remind you of the days at the cinema? It, the it does, it does, yeah. It does remind me of uh, days at the, days the cinema. Prickly seats and all that. Yeah, there's, and, you know, I think maybe, uh, I, I think maybe one, or, one or two grandparents' parlours have, uh, yeah. have been, uh, been kind of uh, adorned with furniture mm. with this kind of velour covering. But it's quite, quite, a, quite a simple proposition, this car, really. Yeah. say it's with a budget for a you know to redo the fuel system and the, the, the court washes are like five quid it doesn't take long to yeah. get the, to get the uh, autovac off but you probably want to rebuild the autovac at the same well, time i had an autovac rebuilt by a specialist yeah. for a car probably within the past three to four years and it was a few hundred quid yeah, it was less than 500 yeah, yeah it's not a lot and it's worth yeah. doing it really just belt and braces so you get, yeah. you get good service out of it that's right but clean uh, out the fuel lines yeah, as you say so say I, I drove it around the yard and it, it was sprightly the engine was very quiet very yeah. nice so but you know it does want some recommissioning before before you take it on the road uh, all the tires look good on the car it's obviously been well looked after well maintained yeah. it's a great history file with it there's a lot of lot of history on file i like it because it's this two-tone gray Whereas, you know, so many of these cars get painted into either, um, you know, sort of white, off-white yeah. ivory or something, yeah. become sort of wedding cars. Whereas this... Yeah, it's a very graceful colour, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And with so many of its sort of original parts, like the mm. spare wheel covers mm. and so, such, a, so, such and so forth, um, you know, in the rear, you've got absolutely bags of room. You can lord it up in there. 
You and, can. And it do, in fact, it's good leg room, isn't it? Yeah, great leg room. And yeah. b but also, if you had a if you had a big bag of popcorn in there, it wouldn't look out of place, would it? No, and a big bottle of pop. Yeah. <laughs> it's also got the uh, nice little com companion mirrors in the rear quarters in there. So yeah. you little mirrors in there. Uh, it's, got, it's got a trunk as well, this car. Luggage rack and a trunk. Yeah, let's have so, a look. Yep. My gosh. So you got look at the trunk there? on that. Is there anything in there? Is Nothing there any in junk there. in the trunk? There's no jewels, no. No. Oh, well, there we go. But I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Right. This must be an expensive car. How much? No reserve. No reserve? No reserve again. So they're both in at no reserve. You're bidding on two now. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Wow. Well, I'm certainly going to be watching. I'm uh, certainly going to be watching. I'm going to be registering to bid. And I'm going to be waiting to pounce. Yeah. And again, opening screen on that one. Yeah. You love an opening screen. I do screen, like an don't opening you? screen. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? It's just re in the, yeah, a nice uh, warm day. You just get a yeah. draft, the draft just because obviously the. Have you got a of, hot face or something? I have got a hot face, a hot yeah. Face. A lot of heat yeah. generates from the bulkhead on these because yeah. they're a big engine. And you get a hot face. You get a hot face and you, now you get a cool face. You get yeah. that lovely draft of the that Just screen. you in particular or, it's just or anyone? That's no, just me. Just you. <laughs> okay. Too many years spent driving these things. <laughs> so yeah, great car. Wow. No reserve. I do like a nice pair. Mm. Suits Maybe. you, sir. Yeah, well. Which one comes up first? <laughs> we'll get you down for both of them. All right, okay, good. Hold on. We got, do these shutters open and close? Yeah, they do. They're actually thermostatically controlled. Yeah. So they'll start opening at sort of 75 degrees. Have, um, have, you, have you had them working on this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah. So they had it running, had the shutters open, and they'll actually close when the car cools down, when the engine cools down, yeah. they'll close as well. Obviously keep them closed in the winter so they won't open, but to a sunny day, they just start opening. It's, Pretty clever, really. There's a little what's called the callostat in the header tank here, yeah. top of the radiator, which thermostat effectively. So yeah. it just pops the pops the uh, louvers open, which is quite well advanced for 1930s, isn't it? Yeah, really? absolutely so. So now I'm not going to be around. I, I'm not going to be around on the 10th of September, unfortunately. I've been to every Manor Park you classic, have. classic yep. auction since they started, yep. and now. I find myself on tour with a band across the other side of the world. But I can still bid, can't I? You can, I can, yeah. I can register to bid and you bid either online. Yeah, you can telephone bid. Yeah. Or if you want to, you can leave a commission bid on, leave your highest bid on for the day, and then the auctioneer bids on your behalf. Oh, OK, that's so cool. So there's no good excuse for you to miss these two. But no. then, uh, you know, I like, to, I like to sort of, you know, wait to see what's happening and then punt in. Yeah, we can bid in the, on the phone. Yeah. That's a good one. One of the operators will help you tell you what's, what's going on with the bids. Fabulous. OK, well, that sounds great. I'm very, very interested in both of these. I like, I like the charm of this. I like the idea of driving it around like, like just mm. as, he, as is, but obviously uh, slightly recommissioned. This one, what a champion of a car. Yeah. Brilliant. You know, a couple of weekends on that and you, you're sort of getting it running, aren't you? Well, it runs already, of course, but yeah. there's, there's not a lot to do to get that car on the road. Oh, I'm, I'm rolling for a roller. Yeah, the family would be delighted if you turned up with this. They would, yeah. Thrilled to bits, the little faces. <laughs> the thing is... Yeah, I, I tried that one and they weren't. <laughs> yeah, I could fit the whole family into this. You could. I, yeah. think, no, I think this would go well. Yeah, perfect. So I'm going to take your advice, Roger, yeah. and I will register to bid and I may end up being the owner of a Rolls-Royce or even a pair. <laughs>